All right, don't turn that station, don't turn that dial, because if you do, you'll miss a really, 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 really good show. Because our guest this evening is Bob Bednar. He's running in a really hot, competitive state rep race. The main thing is, folks, whether you're watching this from downstate, or when you're watching it upstate, this is indicative of a number of hot races in the Republican primary going on throughout the state. There are at least eight of them, okay? And we're gonna highlight one, but the same issues we're talking about here, they're going to be relevant to many of those other Republican primaries. So keep watching the show. All you have to do, look, if you're watching the show now, just for the next half hour, lean back and enjoy it because it's going to be really, really good. You're going to find out, oh, about social issues. Is it over as to same-sex marriage? Are there still disputes going on within the Republican Party as to which Republicans supported that and why and how they should be rewarded and penalized? Are there economic issues that divide some of these Republicans in the Republican primary? Are the Democrats getting ready to push for a progressive tax? Are your taxes going to be going up? Do you know everything you should know about the fall election or even the Republican primary on March 18th in terms of the governor's race? All of that and more you'll learn on public affairs this evening. So whatever you do, lean back and enjoy it. Because if you change anything, if you click that remote, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we're going to be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because as I promised, our guest is Bob Bednar. He is a Republican from Mundelein. He is running, well, uh, and it, we'll get to Libertyville, Waukegan, uh, Grays Lake. Oh, so many areas. And if you're watching this, and unless you're in, there are like 21 villages in his, in his district and only two are in our regular viewing area, okay? And those are Buffalo Grove and Arlington Heights. So everybody else, if you're watching it and you're in the 51st State District, means you're watching it on YouTube. And you may wish you could have watched it on Comcast. And we'll talk about that a little later, about the person at Comcast who made the decision that it wasn't a priority. It wasn't his priority. We'll talk about that. But we don't wanna, we don't wanna start the show on that note. We wanna make sure that you know, you're gonna find out if you're watching this on YouTube, there is an incumbent in that district, a Republican incumbent, 12-year incumbent, and his name is Ed Sullivan, okay? And we invited Ed to be here. We did. He never responded. He just never responded. Never heard. He didn't call back, okay? Maybe he didn't get the call, but I did leave a message for him. But the guy who did show up is Bob Bednar, and he is the challenger, okay? And we're going to find all out, Bob. One of the main issues he's running on is the issue of same-sex marriage. Now, that was a big vote. And remember, the Democrats passed that in the State House with 61 votes. They needed 60 to pass it, right? That's exactly right. And so Ed Sullivan voted. He's a state rep, Republican state rep, and he voted for that, right? That's, that's correct, Jeff. We had, we had and three. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but folks, nobody really talked about this much. This so-called landmark legislation passed essentially by one vote, and well, they had one extra, right? They had so, one to spare. One to spare. But if Bednar, excuse me, if, if if Sullivan had not voted for it, and one other Republican had not voted for it, it wouldn't have passed. So those two folks made it easier. They could have maybe gone to a Democrat to get it passed, but it would have been a tough vote for some of those Democrats in their district. Right. That's, that's a very good point. Uh, you know, when, when Republicans are in the super minority in the House and they go ahead and they vote with Madigan and they support some of the agenda that the Democrats are pushing through, what they end up doing here is giving cover to weak Democrats in districts where there could be a strong Republican waiting in the wings challenging. Yeah, because uh, as you say, the super majority, the State House now has 71 Democrats. 47 Republicans, right? That's, that sounds right. Yeah, and so the supermajority means if they ever need 60%, often they only need 50%, but if they ever need 60%, they actually have that, right? They, they always have the 60 right. votes. 
just if, the way it, it lays. If the Democrats stay there, but as you point out, sometimes the Democrats don't want to support the so-called Democratic majority. That's, that's right. Anyway, so Sullivan stepped in, Ed Sullivan, and he voted yes on same-sex marriage. Ed, Ed Have voted you had yes. a conversation with him as to why he did that? I had a, a small conversation with him during the summer about that vote, and I had an opportunity to ask him about it. And uh, he said, you know, I think we're making way too much of a big deal about this. And I said, but I don't understand. It's a conservative district. What was, what was the net effect here of voting for it? And I kind of thought about that. It's got to come down to campaign finance. It's, it came down to... He was, needed the money, and you're saying there was there a lot were gay, of money gay lobbies out there that supported his vote and would support him if he gave them their vote. Is that right? Absolutely. That's what you're saying. I, I, I don't know that, that, but that's what you're saying. And in support of that, I mean, would you point to any campaign literature that's come out recently? Well, uh, this one came in today's mail, which was show the, interesting. Just show the voters. Hold that up so this, they can see it. That's it. This came so that from says conservative Ed Sullivan fighting for a better economy for people who may not be able to read that. And it says the right choice to fight for us, vote for conservative Ed Sullivan. You can't read the small print. But what does the small print say in terms of who paid for that mail? Yeah, the small print says this came from Illinois Unity PAC. Now, who is Illinois Unity PAC? Illinois Unity PAC is an organization that was just started this year, and it basically supports gay and lesbian lifestyle legislation. It's, it's a special interest group. So they're telling people that Ed Sullivan is conservative, fighting yeah. for a better economy, and in return, it, for, it would, it so would, he got money, essentially. He got money in kind, and he gave them his vote. That's your allegation? That's, well, it's more than an allegation. It's a I fact. Mean, you know, maybe he just, look, what somebody might say, maybe Ed Sullivan thinks same-sex marriage is just the right thing to do. We, do you we, think? From the Sullivan household, we've had a lot of different excuses come along on the reason for this vote. Uh, in, initially, the day of the vote, Ed said it was because his mother-in-law is a lesbian, and he wanted to support her. He okay. wanted to support his mother-in-law. Correct. Well, Lee, you're not against supporting mother-in-laws. You might I'm, have had a mother-in-law, right? I had a mother-in-law, and she was awesome while she was, was here. Was she a lesbian? No, she wasn't. And if she were, would she? Would you, that have caused you to vote yes on the same No, it marriage? wouldn't. I would have represented my district. Okay. Your mother-in-law wasn't in your district. Correct. All right. But, so, but seriously, do you think really that's the reason why he voted yes? Because his no, mother-in-law is a it's, lesbian? What, it's, it's not. Um, what, what's, the, what's the true skinny here? All, all, of these, all of these thin votes that pass in the Illinois House, whether it's by one vote or by two votes, uh, there's, there's a lot of money that's floating around in the background. The lobbyists down there, the special interest groups, they know who's in play. They know who they can talk to. Ed is one of those guys. When, when I took a look at uh, some of the dynamics of this race in 2012, Ed Sullivan took in over $230,000 in campaign money. He had no opponent in the primary. He had no opponent in the general. Now, Ed's excuse here is that a lot of that fundraising helps Republican candidates. He donates from his citizens for Sullivan to other candidates and helps them does be he competitive. Do that? Does he do that? And he, and he does do that. Okay. But, but the problem with the $234,000 that was raised here was that almost all of it came from institutions and lobbying groups. And almost so all of it. You're saying he's then indebted to those institutions and lobbying groups? Well, a lot of it comes from unions. It comes from gambling. It comes from the liquor lobby. It comes from uh, mining. It comes from manufacturing. So the liquor lobby, the unions want various things, and they, they figure do. if they finance candidates, they'll get a yes vote. The utility companies. Okay. The telecom your companies. your district, tell us a little bit about your district. We've mentioned Buffalo Grove and Arlington Heights. And an area that could have gotten to see this show if, if Dan Hoiser, who's at Comcast, working for Community Access, had said this is a priority. But you see, I applied too late because I didn't know you were going to be on until just last week. I didn't even know this was a competitive race. He said, Jeff, why don't you think a few months ahead? And now I know you would have hoped it would That's be a competitive race. Did you know it was going to be a competitive race like last November or something? I did not. Yeah. Uh, I got in this but race. It is now. It I got is in now. this race very okay. late. So, Oh, so your district, people could be watching in Gray's Lake, in Libertyville. Libertyville. Libertyville is a big part of the 51st Libertyville's district. Huge. So now they have to go to youtube.com slash TV, which is where they're watching if they're watching it now. Waukegan, they could have been watching. Yeah, Long Grove. Wakanda. 
Bond Grove, Pieces Mundelein, of Vernon Hills, Green, Green Oaks, Gray's Lake, okay. Barrington. And Lake then, well, Barrington. those are areas are North Barrington, Barrington Hills. We can't blame Dan for that because they're not within his viewing okay. area. He couldn't. But just so people know, your district includes Lake Zurich, Hawthorne Woods, Deer yes, Park, does. Forest Lake, Kildeer, if, if you Round look, Lake Park, Vernon Hills, Long Grove, Matama, is that how you pronounce that? Now these are not the Howling, these yeah. are not real liberal areas, was what you're saying. They're not. They're, they're, these are areas that may wanted the vote to go against same sex marriage. Would, the, would that these be fair? Are, these or at least are, the majority uh, might have wanted same sex marriage to be opposed. The the fifth, Yeah, I, I absolutely believe that. And so you're opposing. If they send you there and you had a chance to make a vote, you would vote no on same sex marriage. I, I, of course I would. But let, what about some of the other issues, like some of the economic issues? Because Ed was there when there was a 2% increase in the income tax approved by the state legislature. Correct. Were there any Republicans who supported that? I mean, just be fair, I don't think there were in the state house. I right? don't think there were. So Ed didn't support that in terms of his vote, right? And, and, and I think there's something to be said here when, when, as Republicans, we are in the minority in the House, we are in the minority in the Senate. When we stick together, we can make a statement. So that made a statement, even though you didn't stop the inc increase in the income tax from going through, you could say every Republican, at least in the State House, I don't know about the State Senate, opposed it, right? Correct. And Ed Sullivan opposed it, right? Ed did. So he was making a statement. And, and I'm glad and Ed did. You're, and you're not going to criticize Ed because no. give credit where credit's due. Absolutely. Was he out there really championing that, trying to get people to oppose that income tax increase, trying to get Democrats to change their mind, trying to, was he doing that? I, I can't speak to that issue, and no, it would be you don't know what disingenuous if What I would you did. do? Would you have been doing that if you were I, I certainly would have. So you opposed the income tax increase vigorously? Vigorously. You know, it's and now, interesting just, because... Just, go, ahead, go ahead. As far as the income tax increase, when, when this thing came along, and, and I've been asked this by the other newspapers that are covering the race, this was, you know, put out there by Quinn during the campaign against Bill Brady four years ago. He said he was going to push for a 33% increase, which would have been 1%. After Quinn, the Quinn election, it became 2%, which was a 67% increase. That was the Quinn plan. Well, didn't, didn't Quinn, actually, didn't they pass that before? Was they, when did they pass that? Actually, it was, it, was, it was after the election. After the 2010 election. So after, after Quinn the was reelected, And they passed it as a 2% increase. 2% increase. Since and we already had three, that made it a 67%. So now, and, the, and that legislation was supposed to sunset partially, so the 5% income tax, 5% rate of tax on income was supposed to go back to 3.75%, not That's completely exactly right. Three. It's called sunsetting. Do you support that sunsetting? I do support that sunsetting. Would you like to take it even further and repeal that 3.75 that take all the way back to 3%? I would if like to If you had that option, it. you would vote to go from 5 to 3. I would, because we're losing population in Illinois because of the taxes. People are moving away. They can't afford to stay here. And what about Ed, Ed Sullivan? What does he say on this? Uh, he haven't heard Ed specifically whether we should go from 3.75 all the way down to 3. What does he say about sunsetting? Does, does he support that it should sunset? He does, he does support the sunset. He does, okay. So you're in sync with him on that. And what about taking it from 3.75 to 3%? Yeah, can't speak to Ed's opinion on that. Now, Bill Brady, who's running for governor, says he thinks eventually we should eliminate the income tax completely in Illinois and tax something else if we need the revenue. Do you agree with Bill on that? Uh, you know, it's an interesting concept because I think if you can grow the economy and you can put people back to work, your revenue streams will increase naturally. We don't have a vigorous growing economy at this point, right. so we plus, don't have that option. Plus you'd rather but we have to create it. If you look at supply side incentives, you would rather tax consumption than production. So right now, in a sense, we tax production both on the corporate side and the individual side. That's very well said, so, and, and I agree with what you just said, Jeff. So if we were, cut out the income tax and tax something else if you had to, like consumption, right? Mm -hmm. What about Ed? Does, would Ed agree with me? Uh, we don't know. He's don't, not here. Don't have that specific policy. Okay. He's he's not here. Uh, if he were here, I'm sure he would give us an opinion on it. Yeah. Like, Ed, if you're watching this, where, where are you? Because, you know, I called you as soon as I knew that uh, Bob was going to be here and want to be fair and have you here as well, and you never called me back. I, I don't take it personally, but the voters of the 51st State House District, which we just mentioned all those villages, they might feel like they would like to see you here at least 
at least they'd see you on youtube.com slash public affairs TV, and then we'd know your views. So now we have to guess. Um, what about some of the other social issues like abortion? What's your view on abortion? I'm pro-life. Pro-life. Without exception. So that means would you allow an exception for the life of the mother? I would. All right. So if the life of the mother was that's, at stake, that's, then that's, you would say she exception. should be able to have an abortion. But in rape or incest, you wouldn't allow an exception? I wouldn't. Okay. Now what about Ed? What's his view on abortion? Is he pro-life or pro-choice? Ed's kind of bounced all over the place. Ed's, what is he Ed's latest opinion is that he's pro-life since his children have been born, which... He's pro-life since his children? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Like, does he support parental notice? Does he think that a minor daughter, say a 13-year-old daughter, if she's going to have an abortion, say at Planned Parenthood or somewhere, the, should... The, does he say the law should say that the parents should be notified so they would know something about this? And maybe I, I, I agree with parental notification. I think it's important okay. that what, parental notification be there. What about Ed there. Sullivan? Ed voted against parental notification the last okay. time this came up in the House. All right, so that's another issue contrast. It is. Same-sex marriage, abortion, parental notice, issue contrast between you and its state rep, Ed Sullivan, Jr. I, right? I, I think we also have some, some differences in uh, how we should not allow lobbyists to just control us so much. And what would when, you, when you've what been would down you do about lobbyists? What would you do that you think Ed wouldn't do? Well, for one thing, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be a guy that's for sale where just any industry can come in and just write a check. You're not. I'm, I, How do you stop that? I mean, does that mean you don't take checks from everybody? I think you have you, to draw you, lines. You like you, the Elementary really Education Association. Would you, that's a teacher's union. It is. Would you like to get a check from the Illinois Education Association? I would like to talk to the Illinois Education Association and see what their issues are. Well, have you done that? I have not. Okay. Have they written you a check? No, they have. Have they written a check for Ed Sullivan Jr.? Yes, they have. And what do you think? Has Ed voted their way sometimes, do you think? I'm sure Ed has. Do you think there's a correlation? Well, that's the problem with Illinois. We've become a pay-to-play no. state. Because, like, well, I don't know. Are you supporting anybody for governor in the Republican primary? I have two favorites out of the four Who that are, are running. Who are they? I think uh, it comes down to between Mr. Dillard and Mr. Rauner. Okay. Now, that's interesting because, you know, Mr. Dillard got a big contribution, actually an endorsement. We're taping this, we should say, on March 3rd. A few weeks ago, he got an endorsement from the Illinois Education he Association, did. which people speculated would be worth 250000 at least. So far, I think he's received about 100000 from them. And then a few days ago, he received the endorsement from another teachers union, the Illinois Federation of Teachers. And I'm just wondering, do you think maybe they expect to get something from Mr. Dillard in return? I, I think you have to look at it this way. The unions have a right to have their opinions known. Okay. I think right now they fear Mr. Rauner winning the race. And why is that? Well, because, you know, Bruce's... Uh, Bruce has been a lot more opinionated against the unions than the other three candidates. Especially the public sector unions, right? Especially the public sector unions. Because he thinks they have an incentive to do what you're talking about, buy votes from legislators who then in turn support spending by the unions. And you don't really have the kind of collective bargaining that you'd have with a private sector union and a private sector it's, company. It's, it's the same I think kind it was of FDR influence. actually who supported unions, said there was a conflict here with public sector unions that doesn't exist with private sector unions. You know, I, I came across an old document. But I mean, that, FDR that, was a Democrat, so he was hardly a right-winger. That's right. So, I mean, people want to criticize Bruce for this, but they also <laughs> criticize FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, really? You know, with everything so screwed up in our state, though, is, is everybody wrong? I, I, I think is if Is everybody wrong in what sense? Well, education. We definitely need some serious education reform in Illinois. Do we need it in the 51st district? In the 51st district, I think we're pretty good. Are you? Like in Waukegan? Are they doing well in Waukegan? Yeah, Waukegan has its struggles, but you know what? They're making progress. Progress? I think where we have a real problem is in, let's say, the Chicago, Chicago Public School. The inner city uh, of Chicago? 100 yeah. incoming freshmen, only six will eventually complete a four-year college degree. Right. And it's, uh, We're rewarding failure with the system we have. About 20% of the black kids in fourth grade read at grade level, 80% don't. That's kind of a sad statistic. And 85% of the kids 
are minority, Hispanic and black, and the Hispanics are not doing much better. You know, About the only kids who are doing well are the kids at the so-called select enrollment schools, the more affluent areas, the kids who test in and do well. Um, you so know it's a major problem. It's a major though? problem. Really, it is. I mean, and so you care about those low-income kids that are in failing schools and if, are not learning if, how to read. If, what if should we, we do? What should if, we do for those kids? If we don't fix the failing schools, the next generation is going to deal with the same problem. So again. how do we fix? What do we do? We, we have to offer some alternatives, well, especially in the low-income neighborhoods. Offer school vouchers. School vouch. And they did that. Senator Meeks. Who, who, as everybody would know, is African American, was in the state senate, and he, see, he, he actually proposed a bill, but he sponsored legislation that would have allowed school vouchers for just the lowest performing areas within Chicago public right. schools. Not all of them, like the lowest decile, and not even the. Right now, they spend about fifteen thousand per kid per year. He was going to give them like five thousand, six thousand, so a small amount. The kids who got who stayed behind would have more, because you don't take fifteen thousand. That's you right. Raise, and guess what? There were a lot of Republicans even who didn't support that. It, it passed the state senate, but it didn't pass the state house in large part because the Republicans were not united. Both Republicans and Democrats opposed that in reasonable numbers, but Republicans were disproportionately against it. Do you think those folks who were opposed school vouchers may have been getting support from the? Teachers unions? It's it's entirely possible. Teachers unions don't like competition. They don't like school vouchers. And so, like I was wondering, where Dillard was was Dillard out at that time, championing, doing what Bruce Rauner says he would do, fighting for choice for alternatives. Was he? I mean, you, you know, said you might want to support him. You know, it's him. kind of funny. I told I mean, you who my we, two we're favorite picks everybody. were, and they're yeah. diametrically yeah. opposed on on some platforms here. Yeah. So you're gonna have a tough time making a choice. How do you think it'll come down? I don't know. All right. <laughs> Well, the show is about you. It's not about Kirk. We've had Kirk on. Look, we're fair to everybody, but I think these are questions that are being asked of Kirk. I know he had some trouble. He was trying. Look, the people who usually would give him money were now supporting Rauner, so who doesn't need the money that much? But the main thing, they're blocking Dillard. So Dillard needed the money. Needed the money. Rutherford needed the money. Brady needed the money. These guys. It's all tough. I understand that. But is it really a good move to support the teachers' unions? Because now you have money. But Kirk, what are you going to do? Tell people that use your two hundred thousand dollars to tell everybody that you now support the teachers' unions. I don't know. You, you know the, the the real important thing here that has to happen. Yeah. Whichever one of our Republican candidates wins the primary, they have to become the next governor. We just simply cannot. Well, let but they have to become somebody who's independent. It's, there's no point in having. If you're look, I'm not taking but, but sides. We have, we have but no if I were a Republican, I wouldn't now. want a I wouldn't want a Democrat light. Okay. Okay. You'd want somebody that believed in some of the things you're talking about: school vouchers, charter schools, alternatives. Not having a higher tax, but having a lower tax. Because if you're going to elect a Republican who simply is going to go along, I mean, Rauner's not going to go along. At least he says he won't with the lobbyists, right? He doesn't need these people. He's got seven hundred million dollars in net worth. That's that's right. Right. He can thumb his nose. So sometimes there's something to be said for a person who doesn't need money. Because then he, Ron then he has the say ability no to, the to be lobbies. that that, yeah. that financially independent right. person who's not attached to that campaign dollar. And no we, doubt about and it. We're not supporting anybody. Like Bill Brady has very consistent economic and social conservative views. For some reason you didn't mention. I don't know why, but you didn't. But if you look at that, Brady just doesn't have the money. I say to people, you know, look, I'm on record as saying that I thought Rauner would win. Not necessarily he should win, but he would win. But if Brady we're watching taping this on March 3rd. If tomorrow Brady gets a million dollar contribution from somebody, 500,000, he becomes much more competitive. And he can do that because the campaign contribution limits, which might limit usually a campaign contributor to 5,000, it's off because Rauner's given so much money That's to exactly himself. Right. Okay. It's off for all candidates. All candidates. And for governor, but not for state reps. You're still limited to get no more than 5,000 in a contribution, right? 5,300. 5,300. All right. So. This progressive tax that Democrats are pushing for, how do you feel about that? It's another bad idea. Does Ed Sullivan say that? Ed Sullivan does say that. Okay, so you're, you're in agreement with Ed on that. Uh, we don't know where he stands on charter schools and vouchers, right? No, we Sullivan don't. Might suspect since he's been taking money from teachers unions, not going to be too much of a champion Yeah, it there. could be a problem. All right. What about term limits? Because Ed's been there for 12 years. 
wouldn't sound like you'd be a big proponent of term limits, would it? Yeah, I, I definitely am, am in favor of term limits. I, how I think how much would you limit it to here. for the state house? I, I think eight years is plenty. Have you taken a pledge? Whether we have term limits or not, would you tell people you're not going to run for more than eight years? I won't run for more than eight years. There you That's go. my pledge. And if you did, would you allow yourself to run in the state senate for some time if you left the I, house? You know what? I, I think after eight years, I'd probably have had enough. That would be enough. Now, he's been there for 12 years. What's his position on term limits? Would he favor him even though he's been there for 12 years? I don't know. Ed Sullivan. Give me a call, Ed. We'll try to run it before, you know, come on on. I'll talk. We're fair. But you got to call back. I can't, like, I can't read your mind, Ed. You know, we could look, hunt around for literature, but we want to hear it from you. Maybe the voters in the 51st, right? In Grays Lake and Libertyville and Mundelein. He's from Mundelein, right? He is from Mundelein. Doesn't he want the voters in Mundelein to see him? I hope so. Kildare? Okay. They so, haven't seen him for 12 years, though. This is the first time Ed's had a primary opponent. Oh, here's a big issue. Look, we're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank our guest, Bob Bednar, for coming. Well, thank you, Jeff. We've got a few minutes left, so let's be quick. Illinois minimum wage is higher than the federal minimum wage. It's eight twenty-five an hour, okay? Federal minimum wage is seven twenty-five. Some say the minimum wage in general causes unemployment, but would you have a higher minimum wage in Illinois than the surrounding states? It makes it tougher for you to compete, would you say? It, it does make it tougher to compete. Uh, we already have a higher cost of doing business besides what the minimum wage may be. Our insurance costs are higher. Our workman's comp costs are higher. So what do you, you support workman's comp reform? I, we absolutely have to have more reform here. What does Ed Sullivan say? Ed Sullivan is... Uh, Ed Sullivan is so far silent on the issue. Silent. What does he say about, so you would, would you, well, you would, would you have supported when the vote came up to have a higher minimum wage in Illinois than the federal level, would you have supported making the Illinois minimum wage higher than the federal level? I, I, I would have uh, voted no. And how did Ed Sullivan vote, do you know? I don't know. Okay. Ed, come on out and touch your record. What do you think? Are you worried that unemployment is going to go up, especially for minorities and blacks, if you raise the minimum wage? Because some people now want to raise it the federal level to 1010. Some want to raise it in Illinois to $15. Would you support raising it to $15 an hour? No, I wouldn't. Um, what about Ed? What would he say? We don't know. He's missing an Ed, action. We don't have him to ask him. So. Ed, we got a chair for you right here. We put you, you know, <laughs> don't want to be here. I don't know, you know. Well, tell the folks a little bit about you. We've been talking a lot about the issues. Give them a sense. Who are you? What have you, what you been doing for most of your life? Uh, lifelong Republican. I've been a Republican committeeman since 1992 in Lake County. So that's 20 years of service to the Republican Party. I helped uh, Joe Walsh's campaign in 2010. I was Joe's uh, Lake County coordinator. So I helped Joe win 265 precincts in Lake County, which basically gave us a Republican congressman in the western part of Lake County for the first time in six years. And so what do you mean? Family guy? Family guy. How long uh, have you been married? married 25 years and two weeks. 25 years one, two? One daughter. Okay. She's a uh, junior in college right now. Now, Studying you haven't been a career politician, so what have you been doing? To I'm, I'm not a politician. What have you been doing? You've been earning a living? 35 years in the banking industry. Started out as a bank controller right out of college. Worked uh, over 20 years in the mortgage industry. Did insurance for a couple of years. All right. So you're a finance guy. Financial I'm a finance guy. guy. You understand financial issues. I like finance. You understand banks. Yes. You believe they sometimes have to be regulated. Absolutely. Okay. And where'd you go to school? What? Went to Lewis University. Okay. Commuted out there for four years. It's at Romeoville, Illinois. Okay. It's a De La Salle Brothers institution. Where'd you go to? Could you? Did you grow up in Illinois? Lifelong Illinois resident, grew Where? up in the Grange area, went to Lyons Township High School. And when did you move to the 51st District? In four years ago. All right. So you think you know the district well? <laughs> I do know the district. And you know Illinois well? I do. Okay. So you think you're ready, you're ready to take on? I mean, this would be tough if you're there. Or there's a likely to be a Democratic majority in the you State know, House and the you State know, my, Senate. My you know, my district, district is hungry right now. Yeah. When I went walking door to door, you know, and a lot of folks either they they knew Sullivan was the state rep, they weren't they were disappointed with his votes, they realized that they weren't being represented well. It's a very